Let's podcast alongside Joe Gillio. I'm Joe Ovius. Thanks to Copiers Plus. Check them out online at copiers-plus.com. And thanks to Empire Properties. We're inside Eford Studios, downtown Raleigh. And we'll get a visit from my dad a little bit later on because we've got some tickets to give away. Actual physical tickets. Yes, yeah, sometimes things are still done physically. That's where Copiers Plus comes into play. You got to take those physical documents and move them to the cloud. They have solutions for that. So again, go check them out at copiers-plus.com. Great moments in Joe Talks to First Graders history. <laughs> okay. I was explaining to the first graders at Khan Elementary yesterday that, you know, sometimes to make money, you have to sell ads. And so I would, I was having all kinds of problems in Wake County public school Wi-Fi getting some of our, most of our videos to, to load. Yeah, they block Including them all. all of them from our studio. They block them all. So luckily, I was able to pull up the ones from the ACC tip-off. Mm -hmm. And I said, see, look in the top right corner. That's Copiers Plus. And in real time, I'm saying, it may not mean much to you in first grade. But trust me, <laughs> if you run your own small business, you need the help of Copiers Plus. <laughs> the the million-yard blank stares that those seven-year-olds were giving me was priceless. Hey, it's, speaking of blank stares, uh, it was Halloween yesterday as your is your neighborhood active still normally it is this year i mean there was maybe eight or nine different visits this year i was i, I thought the weather was going to keep kids from trick-or-treating but i was wrong we actually ran out of candy we actually had to get into the other there there was a moment where i almost went into the stash of stuff from the og golf tournament the granola bars and the lance crackers i almost went that far because we ran out of candy uh, we underestimated the demand, but there were two costumes that I thought were amusing and I saw as a trend. The first one was the Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey. A lot, a lot of tra Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey pair ups. And then my favorite moment was, was this little kid comes up to the house and he's dressed up as Deion Sanders at Colorado. <laughs> Don't spit out your coffee, Joe. Don't spit out your coffee. <laughs> Wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> and he's this little kid, he's dressed as Coach Prime. So I, as he's rolling up, I'm like, oh man, it's Coach Prime. And he looks at me and he goes, you know who I am? And it made me, I didn't ask this question, but I was like, did you dress yourself or did your parent think it would be funny if you were Coach Prime? Anyway, he's like, yeah, nobody knows what this costume is, but you you understood it. I go, yeah, no, I, I know who you are. You're Coach Prime. Uh, what I didn't say to the kid because it would go over his head was, are you going to look at your stash of candy and say this group isn't good enough? This group of candy is not good enough. So you're forcing them out of the portal and you're going to go to another stash of candy and see what's available and bring them over to you? Bring in your Louie. That's what you got to do, right? That's what you got to do. Speaking of college football, we had the, the, the scariest thing that could possibly happen on Halloween night. The scariest thing that could happen, Joe. College football playoff rankings came out. The first one's spooky. It gets everybody all panicked. Oh, my goodness. The first one. What does it mean? How is this team not ranked? Why are they here? It's the first one. This stuff will sort itself out. But I do love to play this game, Joe. You know I love to play the game. Where Boo Corrigan, the NC State Athletics Director, has to go on television and answer questions as to why one team's ranked here and why another team is ranked here. And uh, the way it breaks down for your top four from the college football playoff, you've got Ohio State number one, Georgia two, Michigan three, Florida State four. My initial thoughts on this, Florida or Ohio State at number one makes sense. They've got a good resume. Say what you want about how the Notre Dame game played out. Doesn't matter. They won that game. That's a good win for them. Florida State, I find interesting at number four because they also have a really good win on their resume in beating LSU at the beginning of the season. Typically, the college football playoff over the course of history in the first rankings will reward teams that have like big games on their schedule, which gets me to Georgia and Michigan. What have they done, Joe? I preface this by saying that it's early. These things will sort themselves out in the long run. But if you're taking a snapshot of the season, Michigan might pass your eye test, but who have they played? Georgia. They're the defending national champions. Georgia has not passed the high test. They have I've also not, but there's a motivational factor in there that we can talk about too. That's what happens to college football programs that have won multiple national championships and they're going for the three-peat. But again, if it's a snapshot, what has Georgia A looked like and B, who have they played at this point? Which gets us to Washington, which 
actually has played a pretty damn good schedule, but they're on the outside looking in. Now, I do think that Washington will sort, it, sort itself out because if you look at the rest of those rankings, Pac-12 is having a hell of a season on their way out into oblivion, into the extin- inst- extinction pile. But those are my initial thoughts on the college football playoff, Joe, uh, and how the college football playoff committee continues to give you the mixed messaging, and they'll continue to give you that mixed messaging throughout the season. I don't see 8-0 Clemson in these rankings. <laughs> I don't see why, 8-0 North Carolina why in these rankings. Why doesn't the college football playoff committee appreciate what Dabo's doing at four and four. I don't appreciate that. <laughs> Confused. Uh, the only thing notable I saw, and, and thanks to our friend Luke Takak, is, is seeing Notre Dame at seven and two. Yeah. I mean, I know the dice are loaded, but man, there, there wouldn't be, I would really appreciate for Notre Dame to get screwed by this whole thing. And I know that the 12 team doesn't come till next year, but yeah. just kind of looking at that, I'm like, oh, okay, Notre Dame, you, you keep moving the goalposts and, you will not get any closer to your first national title since 1988. You weren't you weren't here yesterday, so you didn't have a a chance to get in on the uh, the Dabo mind virus that seems to be spreading in the ACC. Because yes, Dabo wants appreciation. There was the call that went viral. Shout out to Larry Williams over at Tiger Illustrated. He tracked down Tyler from Spartanburg. He's a real person. Apparently, it's not a plant. There was a theory that it was a plant. And you and I both know that sometimes coaches do get planted questions because they want to go off. All right. I broke Brownlow's brain yesterday when I told her how the triple play from Tom O'Brien was a setup. He was ready to go. He just yeah. needed somebody to ask him the question. Yep. I know, and I know who did it, but regardless. So I, I don't put it past a coach to do that, but to, I don't think Dabo's smart enough. Not smart enough is the wrong way to put it. I don't think Dabo is that like galaxy brain playing 4D chess that he would have somebody call into the coach's show. Again, you're talking about a guy who feels it deep. He does feel it deep. And he wants people to appreciate what they've done. This This always reminds me all of this, and anytime you see a coach get past year 10, mm-hmm. it always reminds me of Steve Spurrier at Florida. Yeah. And he, the only one of a few things I'll give him credit for, because he quit on his South Carolina team. At Florida, he had a 10 and 2 year, and he realized that people were upset after winning the national championship and regularly, you know, competing for it and winning the SEC title. He realized that a 10 and 2 year was a bad year and it made people unhappy mm-hmm. and he was like if that's not good enough for you he's like i can't do this anymore and, yeah. and he that's why he went to washington to coach the redskins in his ill-fated tenure in the nfl mm-hmm. and then he came back and he made sure he went somewhere that okay it, you know even if we can't win the national championship i'm going to a program where if we win 10 games it's going to be appreciated um so you know Dabo feels it deep i, I totally understand that he is in denial though at this point because i watched his team in person on Saturday. And my number one takeaway from watching them in person was you're not good enough. Yeah. Forget your own standard. Forget forget being wistful for Deshaun Watson and, and Trevor Lawrence and Christian Wilkins and all and Kayvon Wallace. And, that's that's and the most all of the other guys. Forget being wistful wistful for yeah. those guys. You can't watch that football team and go, man, we're we're this close. Mm-hmm. You're not. Well, I think there's there's denial and there's also keeping the spirits up for your team. Right. Yeah, like you but don't, you're I think a lot of these coaches get confused where their team gets their me- where their players get their messaging from. Fair. It is not from the call in show. Mm-hmm. Okay. It is not from their press conferences, even though some of the stuff can get pulled out and the team itself will put out on social media. Sure. Right. Uh, but it's not from that. It's from how you communicate with them on the regular. Mm-hmm. So for, for Dabo to continue to be like we're four plays away or we're we're this close. Honestly, you're in denial. Your team is not good enough. You have a loft. You have a lack of talent. That is your problem. Okay? And listening to the podcast yesterday and Mac talking about his defense and kind of deflecting and ask Gene oh, and ask that. All the deflecting. Which was a little bit of a, a slip in the master class that is Mac Brown. Mm-hmm. All I kept thinking to myself is it's just too easy to sit here and say we couldn't tackle a guy. We weren't good enough to tackle a guy. Mm-hmm. Because there are times, and, and I guarantee you, after that football game, North Carolina, their coaches were challenging their players in the locker room. You have to be better. You have to be more physical. You have to be tougher. You have to be willing to go in and make a play. Like, there, there is no, to, to Max point, there is no magic like, there is oh my no God, if we, if we come out in the one seven uh, four, we'll, we'll magically there, be better. There was something that Max said later, and we played the clip yesterday, where 
he's like, you, you can't get the, you can't get the vibe for 120 players. Right. Yeah. You, know, you got, you got some guys who are, are happy that they're playing. You got some guys who aren't happy because they're not playing enough. You got some guys who are upset at their coaches, all things that are very just level headed Mac Brown. You've been doing this a long time ways of looking at it. Funny though. He would, but cause I, I have to. Yeah. Funny though. None of that was pointed out when you're six and zero. Of Even though not. it's a reality, but of none of that's not. pointed out when you're six and zero. What that's I what I'm saying. This is a rare Mac slip. What I find this is a rare messaging slip by Mac. What I find interesting is something that you've always pointed out to me in conversations you've had with Kevin Keats over at NC State, the basketball coach, where he's like, "What what we know how to get to players is out the window." Yes. How do you communicate with this general? And I'm not saying this in a malicious way. Right in some sort of condescending way, it's that you just have to adapt to the various generations and how you reach young people. And I do think that some of these coaches are struggling to see how they can get to the motivation level to get them to do exactly what you just said, challenging them to go and execute the way that you wanted to. Pat Narduzzi stepped in it because he's like, yeah, man, the, the quality of players that we thought we got were just not there. And the players are like, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Now, you don't think... <laughs> what that, are you trying to say? You don't think Pat Narduzzi is the <laughs> first coach in college football history to challenge the fact that his players weren't good enough? You know what I find, and we'll talk to Bobadi Jones about this a little bit later on because that's what Deion Sanders is doing too, where he's just straight up calling the offensive line out, you know, because of what happens with Shadour Sanders. Well, how do, how do they handle that sort of public criticism? I don't pretend to know the answers, but this is why coaches are paid $11 million a year to figure it out and not talk to us like we're idiots, like we can't see the, the, the same things. Now, but before we move on to some other things that are going on, like treating us like we're idiots, like we said, uh, every time we talk about college football, it's brought to you by Wings Over. Check them out in Raleigh, Chapel Hill, and in Greenville. They're going to be helping us out for our OG tailgate, which we'll talk about a little bit in housekeeping. Uh, but I was there Friday, got the tendies, got the wings, got the garlic, garlic parmesan, tater tots again. I love those. Uh, so, go, And again, my, big, my, my favorite aspect of this, online ordering. Set the time you want to go pick them up. They're there, ready to go. Like every single time I've gone to get it, when I said I'm going to get there, it's ready. There's no delay. There's no goofing around. It's ready to go. Every time I get them, because I got them yesterday Yeah, for Halloween, neighbors came over. Every time I get them, people are like, these wings, the size of these wings are <laughs> really, really good. Very meaty. And it's true. Now, as I mentioned, don't, don't treat us like we're idiots. I feel like that's what's going on with Michigan and this sign stealing scam. I, I'm now more impressed by this operation than I have been at any point. Really? Yes. Okay. Interesting. Well, I, what I thought was interesting was that Boo Corrigan, the NC State AD, who's the head of the college football playoff committee, he, he was asked about like, how do you factor that into what's going on in Michigan? And he's like, look, man, that's an NCAA issue. That's not a college football playoff committee issue. We're just going to operate based on what we've seen. And yeah, we're aware of the reports, but what are you going to do about it? And he's right. What are you going to do about it until you have actual proof? Instead, we have what's the perfect marriage of the internet and college football taking place once again. No other sport does internet sleuthing quite like college football. And shout out to the originators, NC State basketball fans who discovered flight aware when it came to who's tracking who. So the, the super sleuths are on it. And Jim McElwain, so the, the latest report or yes. the latest super sleuthing is that we got some evidence this, out because we'll use some of our props here in this, this office. Former, this former Marine who's like working psyops for Jim Harbaugh was apparently not just in the stands, but turns out he was on the field. And he was wearing Central Michigan gear when Central Michigan was taking on Michigan State. Jim McElwain, which, fun fact, I did not realize Jim McElwain was the head coach at Central Michigan. They got shark fishing in the lakes over there? I wasn't aware of? Anyway, here's what he had to say. Now, before we go any farther... Um... We've obviously are aware of a uh, picture floating around so with the the uh, the sign stealer guy. Um, you know, our people are doing everything they can to get to the bottom of it. Um, we're unaware, totally unaware of it. Uh, I certainly don't condone it uh, in any way, shape, or form. And uh, you know, I do know that his name was on none of the passes that were let out. Um, now we just keep tracing it back and tracing it back and try to figure it out. But it's in good hands with our people. Um, and again, uh, you know, there, there's there's no place in football for that. So there you go. There's Jim McElwain on the, the sign. You know, he wasn't on any credential, this, this, and that. Um, what, do, what do you do, man? 
You just hope that Jim Harbaugh takes the Raiders job? Because Josh McDaniels just got fired. Is that what you're hoping for? Is, I, there, is, there an NFL, is there an NFL team that'll take Jim Harbaugh? Because I saw Mike Florio, profootballtalk.com, say that the NFL is actually monitoring what's going on with Jim Harbaugh and that there could be some sort of punishment that takes place on the sign stealing uh, with Jim Harbaugh. So what do you do? I just love that Connor Stallions did what I've often wondered how easy it would be to do for a Mac football game, right? And I'm, I'm not trying to be like, oh, Central Michigan, I could anybody can hack into Central Michigan. Yeah. But if you think about some of the credentials that you've received over your career. Oh, sure, right? sure, sure. How sure. easy would it be to go to Copiers Plus and just print out your own version of that credential? Oh, man. Now I'm looking over your shoulder and I'm remembering all of the hoops we had to jump through last year to get that stadium series. Mm -hmm. Look at the, the hologram on there and there's all this other stuff. Oh, and it's I like, show you, right? I, dude, I could show you. I got a Super Bowl credential here. That's the, that's the old Stanley Cup that has the a hologram, but that's. That's from oh, that's from oh six. That was laminated. That was that's easy to saying. do if you wanted to. Like but. I'm saying now, for for certain events like that, you say Super Bowl, you probably yeah. had to put like your a piece of your DNA yeah. into the credential and to get to the, to get into the building. Yes, to get into a Mac game or even most ACC games, mm -hmm. it's like it would be piece very simple to print out a credential. Are you saying are you saying that this is super easy to dupe on a Copiers Plus printer? I think so. <laughs> I think so. Um, but it would also require like, you know, people being on the lookout and all of yeah, this other stuff. Yeah. Because for the most part, uh, you know, if you, if you look like Connor Stallions, who looks like, let's be honest, pretty much every assistant coach in the history of football, mm -hmm. you would look at his credential. You'd look at his khaki pants and his, his team pullover and you'd be like, oh, okay, hey, coach. No, no problem. You know what I mean? No problem. And particularly if you're on the road. Yeah. So, right. This was at Michigan State. It was at Michigan. Yeah. I mean, we're not talking about high level of security here, people. No. Okay. So I, I am now tipping my hat to Connor Stallion. <laughs> he had a hat. Buying a ticket and sitting at the 50 yard line, one thing. He's a kid. Being an idiot, putting it in your name. <laughs> okay. That's another. Like the Marines are not very proud of you for putting this stuff in your name, by the way. <laughs> getting Bobby Valentine here and getting onto the field. I, I don't know if the mustache was real or not, but it's like, what and, and poor Jim McElwain who's like I don't know how this happened and it's like pretty sure Central Michigan has guys who have worked at Michigan there's no way he wasn't recognized and, mm -hmm. and first of all if you're not recognized and you're on the sideline as uh, I think it was Pete Tamil had a whole big list of mm -hmm. here are the rules and there's one through 50 and the badges are numbered and blah 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 blah, blah. and it's like I'm pretty sure people recognize them from the Central Michigan coaching staff and we're like okay and my guess is Connor Stallions also gave him a little bit of money to say, okay, you know, this is not, again, hey, man, it's one thing to go fight Al-Qaeda that you're talking about the, the Spartan Stadium security, okay? They're, they're, not, not, they're not finding Obama, no, Osama, okay? No, 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 no they're Housekeeping. not. Finding a house might be just as difficult, though. At this point in time, it's a very I have more faith in the crew at hometown it's, reality than I do at working at Spartan Stadium. It's, yes, it's <laughs> very, it's, you know, sometimes, you know, it can be very competitive for a house. You cannot bamboozle hometown reality. I mean, I was actually talking to a neighbor the other day who wanted to put an offer for a house and then they got just boom, uh, just somebody came in with a higher offer. I mean, homes are going for over list right now. So you don't want to leave money on the table. Don't take some sort of guaranteed offer. So work with Hometown Realty. Check them out online at myhdr.com. Especially if you're trying to get into new construction in this area from yep. here to the coast. Hometown Realty has got you covered. Just go to myhdr.com. Website could not be more efficient and simpler to use. Also, a big thanks to Whitaker and Hammer. Maybe you're taking that thing to closing. Oh. Well, Whitaker and a hammer can handle that for you. Maybe you have a track violation and you're trying to get out of that sort of thing. Like Joe Giglio. Maybe, maybe you need help on the regular from Whitaker and Hamer. <laughs> they can do that for you. So go check them out at wh.lawyer. Again, that's wh.lawyer. Joining us on the Heaster Automotive Group Hotline, Panthers.com. He is Darren Gant. He was not traded at the deadline Hi, Darren. How are you? Hello, friends. It's delightful to see you this morning. Is it is it true that if you're going to get credentialed for the Super Bowl, you do have to give like a blood test and various other things? You've been to many Super Bowls. It's Yes, it's uh, getting more complicated. Put it this way. They run a background check on you. If you are on a no-fly list, you do not go in a press box either. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's no joke. At the NFL level, 
to, I mean, they, they build out the security perimeter around a Super Bowl site three weeks in advance. And that's yeah. part of the reason, even though cities sort of want Super Bowls, it's super inconvenient for the people who live and work in those cities because the NFL kind of rolls in and takes over for a while. But the security footprint is real. And speaking of uh, speaking of the security footprint, you and I are on a bus in San Francisco and you get a police escort. I mean, think think about the the hoops they'll Seriously, go through. Chips, Ponch and John themselves were escorting Joe and I from place to place. Yeah. Think about that. A bunch of overweight, slouchy <laughs> making their way to because it was for media night. So we were we we're going to the Shark yeah. Stadium. Was it Oracle Arena? I think it was. Yeah. And I was flabbergasted that that area of San Francisco is notoriously congested with traffic. You ain't getting anywhere. Not, Not for us. us. Bro. We were just cruising on by, man. Cruising on by. The NFL knows what it's doing. All right. So I wanted to talk to you today because I was expecting the Carolina Panthers to actually make some sort of move because the Panthers do need to replenish draft assets uh, in the foreseeable future, but they did not do anything. So is this just a byproduct that the Panthers want to keep on to certain guys or maybe there just wasn't a deal that made it made sense to give up on somebody like a Dar uh, Brian Burns or Hey, you know, Frankie Louvu has been really fantastic this year. So what what, what happened last year? I, I think mostly, I mean, with the two guys you mentioned, those are guys they want to keep. Those mm -hmm. are guys they want to build around. Those are guys when this thing might be good someday are the people who will cause the goodness. Um, so I think they want to keep both those guys around. Listen, if, if Brian and his agent can't come to terms with these guys on a contract to the – you know, between now and the end of the season, guess what? He's going to get franchise tagged and we'll do this again next off season mm -hmm. and see how it goes. But it, it's interesting. And especially with the way yesterday's stuff went, I mean, when you see Montez sweat, chase young, get traded, I mean, Washington just blew it up for a two and a three. Um, because, and it was, they only got that for those premium players because they're on expiring contracts. Burns on expiring contract. There's a lot of pass rushers out there who are going to be in that market this offseason. So it'll be interesting to see how, whether, and which one of them get paid. But Brian's a guy they want to keep. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Frankie's definitely a guy they want to keep. He's becoming, Frankie's becoming kind of the Thomas Davis of this place all of a sudden. I mean, he's one of those personality, soul of the building kind of guys because he's just 100 miles an hour. He puts himself in peril. He's out there in a red jersey at practice, not because he's hurt and they have to be hands off with him. They put that jersey on him as a reminder to Frankie. OK, don't run into people at the same speed you normally do. It's yeah. it, it's for your own good. So he's the first guy I've ever known in the NFL to have a, be given a red jersey for self-preservation rather than other awareness. All right. Uh, th th this is a positive thing, Frankie Luvo, but I have a question for you. And I think you probably know the source of my being disgruntled. W what is what is up with Miles Sanders? Like what? Is yeah. He's never been healthy. Is he that? Is it he's not playing behind the, the Eagles offensive line? Like I, I, can't, I, believe, I can't be any more disappointed in Miles Sanders than I am. And yeah, I, I would say that's fair. And I think that's pervasive uh, throughout the community, including people who share this fine building with me today. So he um, I, I, one of the things I think went on this offseason and, and if you're looking for a global explanation to a particular problem, they threw a whole bunch of new together in the same place. And it wasn't cohesive new. It wasn't new that it always worked together. You know, the easy thing for a coach to do, and I'm not saying anyone's name in particular, but the easy thing to do is to hire all your buddies. Mm -hmm. and, and bring people you've known forever into this place. Frank Reich deliberately avoided that. He deliberately hired people he had not worked with, and he calls it diversity of thought. And that's a good thing in theory. In practice, when you try to put that together, you get people a little sideways where everybody's not you know, speaking the same language. It's a little Tower of Babel around here for the first couple of weeks of the year because they're all trying to learn each other. And I think Miles is one of the symptoms of that because the stuff he's good at isn't necessarily a match for the stuff Austin Corbett and Bradley Bozeman and Taylor Moten and Ike Aquanu are good at. So I, I think there's still a little bit of feeling out process amongst these guys. Listen, Miles is too talented just to roll out to the curb. And I think that's one of Thomas Davis. Thomas Brown's uh, jobs, 
here in the short term is figure out how to take the stuff he's good at and sprinkle some of that in with the stuff everybody else is good at. I should say, I, I not only say that as somebody who obviously drafted Miles Sanders, to be clear. <laughs> yeah, same. Uh, I'm, I'm guilty. I, I, should, I, you know. I should say that I was also someone who thought a lot of the moves that the Panthers made this offseason right. made sense. Mm -hmm. it just ha They just haven't paid yeah, off. Yeah, they checked the off all the boxes. I mean, yeah. and, and Hayden Hurst, kind of the same way. Mm -hmm has also underperformed relative to expectation. Um, you know, when you see Tommy Trimble and Chuba Hubbard out there celebrating together on Sunday in the first win of the year, it only kind of underscores the fact that those two guys that they went out and spent a, li a little money on, not huge, it's not like cap breaking kind of contracts or anything like that, but mid-range money on guys they expected more out of. Darren Gant of Panthers.com hanging out with us here on Ovius and Gilio. Uh, speaking of Icky Aquano, they thought about sticking him in rice and just seeing if it'll it'll dry out. They can reset him at some point in time. What 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 has been in the building? Is it a mental thing? Is it just an adjustment of who's around him? What why has he not been the guy that we saw at the end of last season? Yeah, here's another one of my unsatisfying, really complicated multi-factor answers instead of a hot take. Well, we can do that uh, for you, Darren. Sorry. Um, okay. There's a lot of things going on. Number one, Brady Christensen, the really smart, mature guy who was next to him all last year, blows a biceps in the first game. He's out for the year. And then you start the revolving door next to him. Mm -hmm. And he's catching rookies, even though Chandler Zavala knew him from NC State. You know, uh, putting a rookie next to another they one guy. Five game. They played uh, that that whole thing. I've always found kind of silly. Well, they were at least five familiar games. with yeah. each other. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they were at least familiar. But you know, you put a rookie next to him. You put a backup in Cade Mays next to him. You put a new guy you claimed off waivers in Calvin Throckmorton. Doc mm. Throck, by the way, best nickname in the locker room because he was going to medical medical school when he's done with this football thing. Um, it, great nickname, but just a replacement level player. And so yeah. that plays a part. Uh, Icky has. Icky was playing in a phone booth for a lot of last year, and that was really good for him because he's powerful, he's straight ahead, and the way they were running when the playbook was this big second half of last year suited his particular gifts. He's being asked to do different things this year to expand on what he's doing. And the one thing I'll say, and I mentioned this in my mailbag last night, um, which I know you guys read already, all 4,500 words or whatever excessive amount it was. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, yeah, I tend to go overboard. I go on and on. I do this in print, too, not just on podcasting. Um, <laughs> Icky, Icky has James Campen who is one of the best offensive line coaches in the NFL working on this project. And if you've got a project player, he's the guy you want overseeing the project. Um, if anybody's going to fix him, it's him. Here's, here's what we know. Icky is still talented. He is still big and strong and better straight ahead than he is laterally on an island in space. I think there are things they can do around Icky to make Icky a little better. Um, but I mean, like the, the viral clip the other day of him falling down yeah. flat on his butt. You know, I mean, he tripped over Throckmorton's left leg. You know, it, when one of your guys sort of steps on you or trips you, it you look bad and you're the one who gets roasted on Twitter. But there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. I, I think he'll be okay, but there's no question Icky needs to get better. Well, the offensive line gets me to – Bryce Young, we've put his play off long enough, uh, but it just kind of shows you all the other factors that are at play for why the Panthers are currently one and six. And I'm not saying this because I'm trying to blow sunshine up the Panthers rear yeah. end, but it's, I don't think, I think Bryce Young has been fine. Yeah. It, everything, everything happens with a lot of context. And I think he's ultimately been fine. And it, it, it just, sh it shows you where, if you just had better O-line play, like you don't give up a sack to start the game for having yeah. against the Houston Texans, which they eventually won. If you don't drop passes, which we've seen a lot of this year, uh, I just feel that we, we might be talking about Bryce a little bit differently. That goes beyond just being one and six. I mean, I, I think that has been fair for the way Bryce Young has been playing so far. Yeah, I think I think it is. Bryce has been fine. We've kind of joked. I think some of the people I work with and I, we've sort of joked for his entire time here. I think maybe because of his diminutive stature, maybe because of the baby face, maybe because he seems so nice and polite, we, we've sort of joked that we got to stop treating him like a puppy at some yeah. point. Um, Sunday, he started, Sunday was like his first disobedience class 
where he became a dog and, you know, the, he gets his first fourth quarter comeback. You know, this was a thing for him. And and if you see the video of him in the locker room on Panthers.com exclusively, um, <laughs> you will you will see just kind of a release. There's an unbridled joy about what he was doing yeah. that kind of, you know, adds to the to the mythology of Bryce and all these little things he's good at that, you know, can make a bigger difference down the road. So I don't know. I, I, I agree. I think he's been fine. They, there are things like with Icky they could do offensively to help him out a little bit and having guys catch passes is probably uh, pretty high on that list. Yeah. Where do we, we don't, we don't get the uh, drama this week, Darren, of, of seeing Anthony Richardson play against Bryce Young. I'm, yeah. uh, my brain can't process yeah. that. We're, we're not talking about QB wins yeah, cause, this week. Cause CJ's well, but, I mean, we do, no. we do, we do get Frank Reich revenge game. So okay. We, okay. We, we do have that to work with. So that's something, but yeah, Richardson was an interesting case. And I mean, of all the quarterback stuff last week was heavy. Did they take the right quarterback? CJ Stroud's playing so well mm -hmm. to me, if they were going to take a different quarterback in, in this draft, Richardson was really intriguing to me because you've built this galaxy brain staff of quarterback whisperers, including Jim Caldwell, who I just think is a great guy to have hanging around in the halls in a nebulously defined job. Um, to If you were going to have that staff, give them this lump of unmolded clay that's bigger than everything else. Just see what they can do with it. But, you know, unfortunately, mostly for Anthony, he's hurt and not going to be playing the rest of this season. It's, uh, you know, I was told that only small quarterbacks get hurt early in seasons, but apparently uh, not even large quarterbacks like Cam Newton, who was once hit by an actual truck, mm. are safe. Well, it's interesting you bring that up because we'll close on this. Back to Bryce Young. It's not lost on me that the NFL QB situation is dire. If if I'm Roger Goodell, I'm looking at this going, how did we let all these teams get to the point where we're relying on Tommy DeVito uh, to win games? Where, you know, where, where Chris Collinsworth has to sit here and tell you with a straight face, you know, Justin Fields can learn a thing or two from this guy, Tyler Bangett, who we've never heard from, from a college we've never heard from. And all Do you know where Shepard is, by the way? No, no. I do not know where Shepard is. I, I do not. I assumed it was in the Midwest somewhere. He was just giving off major, you know, Gary, Indiana vibes or something <laughs> to me. But it's apparently in West Virginia, question mark, at any rate. So, yes, West Virginia. Okay, all right. So it, this gets us back to Bryce Young. For all the concern of his stature, um, it's going to sound silly. I mean, he knows how to take a hit. He bounces right back up. And maybe all those things were overblown when we look across the league and who's playing and who's not. Yeah, he's he, he's a tough kid. There's no doubt about that. And it's, you know, I mean, one of the things the NFL doesn't necessarily like to talk about is that a lot of who wins each year is based on luck and mm -hmm. injuries. And, you know, are you the team that didn't get a bunch of guys hurt early in the season? The Panthers are on the wrong side of that right now. You know, when you come out of the first two weeks without a starting left guard, you're starting right guards still on PUP, Shaq's out, JC's out. I mean, that stuff started to cascade. And it's a big part of the reason they started 0-6. But, yeah, Bryce is, you know, for a gentleman of less stature – he is a toughish guy. I mean, mm -hmm. he pops up. Now he still doesn't know how to slide. You know, it's not like it's not he, like he's out here on Tuesday going to Myers Park High School baseball field and working on his hook slide with Josh McCown or anything. But right. he that's not really, you know, I don't know that he was a baseball guy growing up necessarily. Maybe Jansen and uh, Greg Olson can take him out with their 10U team and teach him one weekend. Given how they spot the ball from where you start your slide, I don't want my quarterback sliding. Like falling. maybe not. I mean, honestly, and that, I thought that was pretty egregious. Um, which I also mentioned in that excessively long mailbag, which Dilio is going to read as soon as he finishes recording today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they didn't necessarily protect him as officials the other day. When John Hussey says, oh, he gave up his protection when he slid too late, the first thing that ro rolled through my head was Ed Hockley allegedly telling Cam Newton, you're not old enough to get that call. Mm -hmm. And in the case like, of Bryce Young, you look yeah. at him and you might think he's actually literally not old enough because he's got that baby face. See, that's what I'm saying. You're treating him like a puppy. Yeah, that's true. He's grown up. He's an adult.
Wait, just for Darren. What what are you pull? <laughs> what are you pulling up on the uh, on the stream yard as it takes forever to load just at for this Darren. point? Ah, oh, there it is. Ask the there old guy. It is. There it is. Ask oh, the old guy. Ask the old guy. And then a question. If you are chosen friend of the mailbag, we have merch. So uh Ooh, I can say what could be in your future. I, I like know, that logo too. I know, right, I know right? the trade deadline has come and gone, Darren, but I feel like there's a late a late report on a trade. You send us a t-shirt, we'll send you a t-shirt. That's a deal. Absolutely. Right. Make a trade now, Make what, a trade size, what sizes are we talking about here? Oh, I'm a large XL. Yeah, so XL large and an L. L. What do so you need, Darren? I, I'm an need? I'm an XL. So. Okay. We, right. we will absolutely do this. Merch We're, exchange. Because it's tacky to wear your own merch, I think, sometimes. So I'm, I'm, really yeah, well, I'm, I'm out here hustling whoa, for the OVS and Julio podcast. I will absolutely whoa. rock our gear that you can buy at breakingt.com slash OG. Go check that out. See, you, you can only really get a, a friend of the mailbag t-shirt by being a friend of the mailbag. <laughs> uh, the, the real treasure is the friends you make along the way. <laughs> all right. On that note. All right, Darren. We appreciate it as always. We'll talk to all you All right. Later. See you, boys. Big thanks, as always, to uh, the old guy. Darren Gann. And big thanks to Matt Davis over at State Farm. Check him out online at theoginsurance.com, insuregarner.com, or call him directly at 919-779-8277. Got the koozie up. Koozie looks good. Matt looks good. Always helping us. Helping us with uh, an accountant, too. Oh, really? Mm, okay. For tax purposes. We yeah. Have, we have other issues, so... Wait, we have issues? Not issues. Oh. What, we're... Again, you don't know what you don't know. So you have to ask people. Matt runs his own small business. So he has an accountant who so files taxes for him. Yeah. I that's I've, above my pay grade, sir. Dude, I don't understand. How are we going to pay for taxes, by the way? We've been putting money aside with each time we get paid. Oh, is that that's, what I'm supposed to do? That's how we get paid oh, for taxes. No. That's how we're paying taxes. Mm. I've been using that on vinyl. 30%. Yes. I don't know. Um, I thought it was a vinyl tax. I you should could, be doing you that with my 30%. Save money and get yourself a plan. Give Matt Davis a call, 919-779-8277, or go to the OGinsurance.com. Also, big thanks to Homefield for sponsoring Ovi's and Jillio. Check them out online at homefieldapparel.com. Use that promo code OG23. Again, that's OG23 to get 15% off your order. It's November 1st. It's officially Christmas. So you guys start thinking about gifts. Oh, gosh. Look, man, I was in Target yesterday, and it was Halloween, literally Halloween, <laughs> and they were putting the Christmas stuff up already because you had to get ready for tomorrow. It's officially Christmas. Oh I, should I, is it too late? I'm not should going I, to engage in this nonsense. Should I put up Christmas lights tomorrow? I'm not going. When am I allowed to go Christmas lights? You're allowed whenever you want, Joe. We all have to run our own race. Okay, because I'm going to see if I can pull this up because I got these. Um, no, because I have these lights to help with, you know, the the, in, the interior illumination. There's okay. a lot of things that are going on because we have to like compensate for our faces and everything else. So the the rope light is interesting because I like to compensate for our face. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason why we you know, were in print and in radio for years. So if you're watching on YouTube, we've got the I have That's these neon lights, it. these neon lights uh, that help illuminate the background. Did you know that you can go straight up Christmas on these things? See, just did it. Now the lights are doing their Christmas thing. Pretty neat, huh? There's another one called Christmas Gift. What does that do? Ooh, fancy lighting. I like it. Anyway, I just thought that was an interesting feature that is uh, neat about these lights that are on here in the background. Do you like them, Joe? No. Are they going to distract you? Yes. <laughs> so, all right. I didn't fine. even notice it until you. <laughs> fine. Fine. I will go back to uh, what's the one that I've been using? Fire. Ooh. Uh, wait. No, that's. Is that what it's doing? Oh it's man, cooling the fire now. Is it cooling the fire now? Now I got to fix this. What did I do? No, I I picked I picked the wrong one. Let's go back to fire. Okay, we're back on fire. Now we're fine. No big deal. I'll I'll figure out. I'll fix this after the show. At this point, don't 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 mind me. Anyway, go to homefieldapparel.com. Joining us on the Heaster Automotive Group Hotline, Bomani Jones. Right time is the podcast. It is back. You didn't have to change a thing, Bo. It just showed right back up in my podcast feed. Tried to tell people that was going to happen. By the way, shout out to you, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Heaster. 
because I have only been hearing you guys say that and hadn't seen it with my own eyes. I thought it was Eastern. <laughs> no, 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 no. Easter. Yeah, Easter. I, I, I might suggest um, uh, somehow making a commercial out of that H because if I'm listening to it, I would have never found them. Yeah, well, you know, that's my fault. I'll, I'll, st- you know, how you go, you go, <laughs> Clemson, Joe. I'm going to start going <laughs> Easter Automotive Group. Thanks for the pro Bo, tip. Bo money. gets away from, uh, untethered from corporate America and all of a sudden he wants to fuck with our money. Oh, no, no, no. not messing with yours. You want to come out the gate and fuck with our money? It's so funny. (laughs) On the first episode of our show, like they did some like a first person read for me about one of those gambling apps and uh, somebody said something in the chat about like how he obviously knew that I didn't do that and I came back on and I say Something to the effect of, hey, don't mess with my money over there. And up jumps my new eager producer. Uh, and he's like, oh, yeah, no, 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 no. We're not explaining the joke right now, big dog. We not, I'm not, and I'm not messing up your money with Heaster. I'm just saying, I no. didn't realize it was Heaster. No, 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 you're hell- <laughs> healthy. That's yeah, what you're doing. That's right. Uh, all right. So, uh, so Cooper flag. <laughs> Cooper flag commits to Duke. It was this. This had to happen, right? I mean, if if Duke was no, ever gonna it didn't back, happen. Duke was ever going to get back to Duke? Yeah, it had to happen, right? Yeah, and it didn't happen like right after he said it was a little too early to talk about uh, changing gun laws. I mean, he's what seventeen, so I'm not getting on him about any of that stuff. But man, I said on Twitter, jokingly, of course, that you know, I thought he was above doing such things. It's like. Mm going to do man we can't have any fun about anything anymore if we can't have no fun about the white dude from the whitest place in america who happens to be maybe maybe i'm asking this sincerely the high most highly touted white american basketball prospect perhaps ever ever Okay, let me put it to you like this. I'm just giving it to you. I mean, you, you are talking about a school that did have Christian Leitner. So. Right, right, right. But I'm talking but about walking in, he in was the okay. door. I Look, yeah. okay. Think about this. Do you know who the last white American basketball player to be taken number one in the NBA draft is? Off the top of my head, no. Kent Benson in 1977. Do you know who the last one was before him? Okay, before him, I want to say it was Doug Collins. And it was some dude named LaRue Martin. Like the 70s, there's there was, you know, still had a spark. Yeah. But like, just start thinking about it. There, there, there hasn't been as much as people talk about the great white hope. Part of why it's a hope is because the white folks is out here hoping, right? Like just, just grabbing whatever there was and just being like, oh man, what can we do here? That yeah. ain't what's going on here. Like, like this here is a stone cold monster. We haven't had one of these before. I was gonna say I was getting big Josh McRoberts vibes from from this guy. Maybe it was the graphic that I saw, but you're you're saying no, don't don't have this guy. This guy's different. I mean, I was big on Josh McRoberts coming in too, for whatever it's worth. But no, 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 no. This is this is going to be interesting to watch when he walks in the door because he's going to be probably like a first team uh, preseason All American. Yeah, and I imagine that ESPN is going to be all over this that's going to be part of the reason why folks are going to be over it and i and maybe this is the reason why he actually ended up going to duke where he's playing college basketball in general i'm actually surprised given draft history the last couple of years that he did not go to g league ignite that he actually mm. went to college as opposed to what we've been seeing in the trend i'm not surprised by that at all for a couple okay. of reasons one of them being i mean as zion williamson the promotion that you get for going to duke is still a really big deal like i mean mm-hmm. the shashevsky model you know the the late shashevsky model of align your brand with my brand and let's see what happens he's big enough to where that's a thing that matters like if he sold that to mark williams i can't believe you fell for that but for this guy it actually fits the other thing is g league ignite has not demonstrated any particular ability to do anything to develop or promote a player that college hasn't done. Okay, which gets to what I, I guess was, it matters what the Thompson twins do. Th- this, but, like, yeah, but that's that's overtime. At least, different. Though. Yeah, yeah. What's funny though is we're actually seeing this play out in the early going. You thought the C.J. Stroud Bryce Young Bowl was a big deal this past weekend. The Brandon Miller Scoot Henderson, you know, discourse has already taken place. 
the argument that Brandon Miller played high level college basketball games at Alabama was going to be a benefit to him. And it's sort of kind of based on what I've been able to pick up on playing out where yeah. Scoot Henderson is not really producing right now. But it gets to my final point with this Bomani because this, the setup here was is Duke the one college basketball program that is equipped to do this for a player like Cooper flag, where they have that marriage. I mean, they've got a general manager. They're very much upfront about the let's combine the brands. I don't see this happening at North Carolina. I just don't see it that way. Um, It doesn't happen at North Carolina because they're, they're willing to turn their program over to the players as an idea, but they, I don't think they would ever quite turn it over. I mean, there's something somewhat uniquely cynical about the way that Duke has decided to do this thing here. That's a whole discussion for another day, I but mean, I do agree. They're built for it in a way that I think the Carolina currently is not. I tell you this, though, if he showed up at, say, Kentucky, for example, oh, don't you worry, there'd be a way. And honestly, if I were Cooper Flagg, as much as people talk about, of course, the pilgrimage for a guy like him is to go to uh, Duke. But if he wanted to be the biggest deal he could be in the place that he was, man, would nobody love him like Kentucky. That's like going to play for the Celtics. Yeah. What, what's interesting to me is I had one coach tell me this summer that Duke NIL stuff is not, let's go to the car dealership and go get some money. You're talking EA Sports. You're talking AT&T. You're talking national brand stuff. And it's like... As he explained it to me, they're the ones doing it right. <laughs> and they're the only ones pretty much who could do it in that way. Yeah. And I, I don't think they are being like loud and flashy about it other than hiring the general manager. Like, I don't see Shire out here like no. Suge Knight saying, you know, come to my label. <laughs> <Come> like, <laughs> right. right. But King I do agree, Bell. though. But they yeah. are like the only truly like national college basketball brand. Yeah. Like people have to remember, like North Carolina was at some point, but I don't think, you know, they've. I don't I don't have all the answers in that direction. Right. But I don't yeah. know who else is really selling college basketball on a national level right now, other than Duke, which is really fascinating because they're less interesting than they've ever been. What's, mm -hmm. And what's interesting about overtime elite, as I've learned, too, is, Bo, they're actually going by how you drive social media and your dunks and your clips. And like, that's not just somebody saying, oh, here's here's a, you know, three hundred thousand dollars for you to go play basketball for Carolina. Like no. it, th th there's an actual economic model in place there, which I've, I was kind of sort of blown away by to be perfectly honest with you. Well, you know, we did a, um, a deep dive into their whole operation for game theory and, Oh boy, I don't like it at all. Like it's yeah. like the idea, like basically they're paying kids to go down there and make highlights. Yeah. And it seems like a horrific idea. Like the argument against G League Elite, which I think is a fair one, is what in the world are you playing for? Yeah, right? there's, and, there's no stakes. Right. Yeah. And so like there's there's got to be something that you're playing for. Like I do buy into that idea that part of your development needs to be the understanding of like you're out here playing for something other than whatever your own thing is. you got to know how to play for something. Like the thing I think that we're in this interesting place now with American basketball players where the high level stars are all guys from other countries. And I've seen all the thoughts and theories and explanations that everybody has for it. But this is something that I think happens with these guys jumping into the league. So early they gets lost is nobody at that level is getting real practice at being the man, right? Like nobody's getting real practice at what it is to be a star. Cause you're showing up, you're a freshman, you just got here or whatever it is. But there's something to be said about working your way up through like the social hierarchies and everything else. And mm -hmm. maybe it happens for your sophomore year. But like by the time you're a junior, this is yours now. Right. Like, like I think about looking back, Marvin Williams, and it probably never would have gone the way people thought it could physically for Marvin Williams. But if all you are is the seventh man on this championship team and then demonstrated an ability to be assertive and then you'd be the number two pick in the draft, everybody's shocked that you're not assertive. When were you when and where were you going to learn this? Yeah, that makes total sense. One other uh, local bow uh, thing to get into. This is from everybody has a podcast now, man. There's there's nothing unique about what we're doing these days. Theo Pinson's got his thing going on. He has uh, Tyler Hansborough. What's the name of Tyler Hansborough's podcast company? Isn't it called like Thunderhawk or something like that? Not to be confused with the Harrison Barnes uh, Black Falcon. Regardless, uh, here is this exchange between Theo Pinson and Tyler Hansborough on. Who they actually dislike more, Duke or NC State? Who you 
Who don't you like more, Duke or State? I dislike State more. I hate State. Yeah, yeah, it's no question. Okay, I'm just. I think that's a consensus. Well, I you think you got to you got to respect Duke. They've had a lot For of sure. their accomplishments, and I think the same thing. I feel like sometimes NC State feels like they're the same category as us, and it's not. You gotta, I don't think they're. Close. You got to earn that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know they've they've had some some wins <laughs> lately, but. <laughs> You know, let's get a few more NCAA wins. That's and make what I'm, and that's that is my that is my problem. Like yeah. when it counts, you don't do, you can beat us in a regular season. That, yeah, that's that's fine. You hit you get us here and there. Did you lose the state? When you were here. I think once, but we've. I mean, pure dominance. State didn't. Yeah, state yeah. wasn't uh, much that of a threat. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. I love it. I love it, man. It's crazy. I, I I can't stand state. That is, yeah. they they have the most irrational confidence in the world. They they're never that good. They're okay, but we, that's another conversation. So anyway, that's uh, Theo Pinson and Tyler Hansbro, uh, which was pretty amusing. But uh, as we always like to say, uh, North Carolina talking about how they don't care about state or how they dislike state is the feature of the rivalry, not a bug. That's all part of it. That's what makes this area unique. Yeah, I mean, like what happens to your rivalry? when one half of it just completely ceases to be relevant, right? Like, like how, how do you keep this thing going? Like, where Hasbro talked about, you know, did you lose the state? He was like, once. It was literally once, mm-hmm. right? Like, like, it was literally one time, though, for what it's worth, he lost more games at the RBC Center than he did at Cameron. <laughs> With the just, correct naming rights and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just want to throw yeah. that out there. It yeah. only happened one time. But as somebody who's not from around here and didn't go to either one of the schools, it is interesting when you show up from out of town and you realize that State Carolina is a thing but a thing in its own weird kind of way because it's really just about disliking each other. Like, I love the fact that Carolina Duke is an all-day, every-day, never-stops thing in Chapel Hill. Mm -hmm. It never ceases, but it never feels unhealthy. Yeah. State Carolina in both directions feels unhealthy. So I know. Yeah, and you know why it feels unhealthy? Tyler Hansbro is sitting there wearing a T-shirt that got a pocket on it, and the pocket is in camouflage mm-hmm. and he's saying how much he hates NC State. Now, if that ain't the most ironic shit I've ever seen in my life, I don't know what is. And it makes you wonder just like how much of how much of the feelings in that robbery on one side come from a little something called self-hatred. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you see you see a little boat of yourself in the other side that you wish to admit. Roy Williams, I mean that's classic one of us. One of us, one of us, but he kicks your ass all the time, which I think ultimately is why NC State fans respect Roy Williams because at least he keeps that hate going. Although I want to see who's irrational at the end of the season, depending on how North Carolina season goes and how we talk about Hubert Davis. Who's irrational now? Dude, this, I mean, good for him that he got that one in early. Uh, you know? Like, like that, that's, that's going to be crucial. It'll be very important for the yeah. historical record, right? Uh-huh. Like if the, if what was it the Crispin brothers that did it in Matt Doherty, if that, <laughs> if that doesn't happen, maybe we talk about that brief epic of time somewhat differently, right? Um, well, that, 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 that's so, that's a reference I have not thought of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like may, maybe the memory of things is a little bit different, but for Hilbert, this was, I mean, it was always a very interesting call and decision to get him. They do seem to be able to get some players here and there, but uh, he, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. going to be interesting. All right, let's transition over to the NFL uh, where Roger Goodell, is Roger Goodell hitting up every NFL team going, can you explain to me how Tommy DeVito <laughs> makes a roster? Can no. you explain to me how a guy named Tyler Bangett from where? How does he make a well, How do we, honestly, how did we get to a point where our age range can remember competent backup quarterbacks to the era we live in now where what would have been a competent backup quarterback, Brock Purdy, fills up airwave time with, is he the next Tom Brady? Did Tom Brady break everybody's brain that we're looking for these guys, these diamonds in the rough? We're going to be all timers. Is that what's happening here? Yeah, I tried to make this point that there was an era where not only teams had competent, not only the teams have competent backups, but they had them for a long time. 
Like Frank Reich played for Buffalo for something like eight years. Like Gary mm-hmm. Kubiak was carrying, uh, I don't know how good he was, but he was carrying John Elway's golf clubs for like a decade. Like it was just a decision that was made. You're our guy. The 49ers had a Hall of Famer. They, dude, the 49ers had a Hall of Famer. And then when he left, his backup was good enough to start yes. somewhere else. And then his next backup was good enough to start somewhere else. And by the way, then his next backup was good enough to start places. It is an interesting change, and there are a lot of like reasons, and it's kind of difficult to get into, but something fundamental happened with football, and I've been talking about this, and I just don't think that people get it, which is not everybody was stupid back in the day. And what I mean by that is, it's like all these people came around, and they broke out some math, and they're like, hey, well, you know what? It would be a lot more efficient, and you could do a lot more of this and that if you guys just threw the ball more, mm. which makes perfect sense except for the fact that throwing a football, just simply throwing one, is really fucking hard. Like, you think about this. You go to a high school football game, right? Not a high school football game among top 10 teams, even in your state, right? Just a couple of teams just, just playing on a Friday night. Just, 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 say, just, just say Garner and Elbow. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, don't, I never got into y'all's local high school football, so I couldn't tell who, you know, who would be the ones to point out. But yeah, call it there, Garner and Lowe. And go watch one of those starting quarterbacks try to throw a football. Right. It's hard. It's a bigger gap between that and, say, somebody in the pros than watching somebody shoot a jump shot in high school versus watching somebody do that in the pros. There just aren't that many people that can forget about read a defense and do all this stuff and run all these plays. Just throw a goddamn football. Just throw it and make it spiral and make it go far and make it go fast. There just aren't that many people that can do that. And they built the entire game about doing it at like a scientifically precise level. It doesn't make any sense. Why were they running the ball all the time? Because I got a dude that can do that. There's not a person in this whole town that can throw a football. You know what I mean? Like, and so, yeah, so we got this whole game that is based around the idea of throwing the ball, even though there are like six people in the league that can do it at such a level that you say, hey, the team that has him can win a Super Bowl. Yeah. In any given year, that is a fundamental flaw in the structure of this whole game. That, like, we just don't stop and talk about. Like, it. never mind the fact that it's like, yeah, we're going to build this all-around throwing in a game where I might have to play in Buffalo in January. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, speaking, speaking of guys that have fallen back down to earth, uh, we don't we don't talk about that with uh, with Josh Allen now, do we? He went all of a sudden, like, he's going to take over the league, too. Or, again, with Brock Purdy, too. I, I, it's interesting to me where we want these microwaved results so you just move on to the next guy. But I think the the bigger issue is a thirst level that we have to identify the next yes. Tom Brady. I really think that's just what it comes down to. You, you just have to pay attention to how we're talking about these things. And yeah. it, I think that that brain rot then goes to these coaching staffs in front offices mm-hmm. where we, we, we clown this all the time. When Matt Rule is the head coach of the Carolina Panthers, what did he say when they were drafting? Joe? Oh, we're just going to draft the next Patrick Mahomes. It's just that simple. <laughs> we'll get him. <laughs> I love the ideas. Yeah. We're going to get the next thing we've never seen before. Yeah. Like they, they all must be Brady. pumping down an assembly line after that. Well, my favorite is the next Tom Brady. And the reason is you'll never see the next Tom Brady coming because there's nothing. Ab- the only way you can be the next Tom Brady is to do it. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't agree that Caleb Williams is the next Patrick Mahomes, but I see why you would watch him and think that that is possible. You watch Trevor Lawrence and you don't think, whoa, that guy's the next Tom Brady, because quite honestly, he's too physically talented for you to say that. The next Tom Brady is just going to be like, damn, he's still out here doing it, huh? So when we get to the end of the season, we'll close on this. Oh, no, we need a Miami take from Bo since we're on different sides of the Oh, what, on, what on, on, on the Dolphins? Yes. Oh, the Dolphins are an exotic car. <sighs> I've been saying this. They're an exotic vehicle. And as somebody, Bomani, who lived in Miami for, for, a, for a while, oh, they look good on A1A. Yeah. Right? On Beach Front Avenue, man, when the when they just got washed, it's whacked. <laughs> the, that neon from the Clevelanders hitting it just right. I tell you what, man, that car looks amazing. Take it to the shop. Or it scrapes, yeah. it, it scrapes the bottom of a speed bump on your way back out of a, on Rickenbacker Causeway. And then how's it then? Is it is it handling great? No. Yeah. 
the Dolphins. The Dolphins are an exotic car right now, man. Or like, hey, let me get a look at that paperwork, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, license and registration, please. Uh, what the Dolphins are is a litmus test for who they're playing. Like, yeah. if they come out here and beat you, that's a bad sign about your fortune. They yeah. got, they will beat the brakes off a bad team. Good team shows up, and it's kind of you. That's why the that's why the Patriots are in dire straits. Yeah, right they are. They made they are pretty easy against the Patriots. They are. We'll find out this week. I'm telling yeah. you, we're getting a rematch. We're, we are getting a rematch of the Super Bowl. We're getting the Eagles, and we're getting the Chiefs. Simple as that. I don't know about the Chiefs, man. Thank like, you. Oh, the Chiefs the, do this every year. The Chiefs have a speaking of speaking of lemons, they have a they have a lemon game every season, man. Yeah, my, my concern is not about the game itself, but you go look at the point differential. Like this, they they look like one of those teams that isn't as good as their record. Okay, and I think they just like they're short on good receivers, and that does still matter because you've got Mahomes, but Mahomes is not Tom Brady, and I don't mean that as to say he's not as good as Tom Brady. I mean that to say, if you're going to do this with Mahomes, you want guys that can stretch it, right? And and they just don't really have that. They just got this pedestrian set of wide receivers, and it makes you wonder like how good their offense actually can be. The problem is the best uh, alternative option in the AFC is Cincinnati, and I like Joe Burrow a lot. I like Chase a lot. I mean, I like a lot of what they got going, but you are still asking for a lot of me to buy into this idea of Cincinnati Bengals dependable operation. No. I've, I've no. been living too long to do that. Dog. Yeah. And we also know the NFL is scripted, okay? And the script <laughs> the script is going to spit out Taylor Swift at the Super Bowl. I mean, it's God, just that it can't, simple, dude. It can't. It can't. It can't it's going it to happen. We're going to have a Taylor Swift Super Bowl. It's going to get massive amounts of coverage. Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift are going to break up, and then we're going to get a new album, and we're going to be reading the tea leaves to see. Well, and the Chiefs will lose. Again, this is all scripted. So the Chiefs will lose, and then we'll have NFL insiders like Adam Schefter pour over lyrics to see if there's anything about any sort of discontent that happened in the locker room throughout. That's that's where we're headed in 2024. I'm calling it right now. Dude, I, I'm done. <laughs> hey, and you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but in a manner of speaking, Travis Kelsey and I are now like co-workers. That's right. That's right. Wave yeah. entertainment. Yeah. And, you know, at some point I'm going to have to discuss this. You are. You are. So we'll we'll get you. I don't want to mess up your money. We'll no, wait. no, 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 no. I'm just letting you know now. But it, it was funny, no, though. I, I got to do it. Like everybody, yeah, gonna, when, it, do when, it. when the time comes. I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? You but it is a Travis little weird. Kelsey, you know how many Travis Kelsey Taylor Swift costumes I saw yesterday? Oh, I can With kids? It. Of course, my personal favorite one was the kid who came up to the house. And I referenced this at the, stop, at the start of the podcast. Kid came up to the house dressed up as Deion Sanders. He had the cowboy hat. Mm -hmm. He had like the I ain't hard to find t-shirt. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, man, it's Coach Prime. And he thought it was funny. He's like, you actually know who I am? I mean, yes. who doesn't know Coach Prime at this well, point? Well, that's the thing. That's what happens when your parents pick out your costume. I'm pretty uh, sure that's what happened. That's why I didn't tell them the joke. I'm like, if my candy's not good enough, are you going to go into the portal and get actual <laughs> full-size candy bars that you're happy with? Yeah. By the way, did you watch um, the Halloween edition of Around the Horn? Uh, no, I did not. Go check, out Taylor, go check out Taylor Swift. In fact, if you have a computer in front of you right now, you should go on Twitter and search for Taylor Swift Around the Horn. Hold on a second. I can do that right Joe, now. Yeah, Joe, Joe, and Joe both want to do this. I want. Well, no, I want to do this. So Taylor Swift, Actually, pull it up for us. I'll pull it up yeah. right now and around the horn. While he's doing that, though, Bo, I want to thank you for joining us on the Heister Automotive Group Hotline. Heister, yes, sir. Heister, Heister, get down. Heister. Not Heister. to say, not to be confused with Eastern or Keister. <laughs> oh boy, no, that's their slogan. <laughs> Uh, oh, oh, no, 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 no. Is this what I think it is? It is indeed. Oh, hold on a second. I okay. didn't see it coming. Although I kind of did. Hold on a second. I'm actually going to see Sedano on Friday because he's calling the yeah. Miami. Can he's calling the North Carolina Miami uh, Campbell game, and my mom's going to make him some Cuban coffee. That's pretty good from uh, from Sedano. It was a um, lot going on. I just want to point out three dudes showing skin on purpose. Like it's a whole new day. <laughs> what is what is Woody Page doing? It's Taylor Swift. <laughs> what is he doing? Why? <laughs> I get what Izzy's doing. He's just he's just Izzy. He's Ken. He's right? Ken. I don't know. It's like I'm just Ken. Yeah. He's, he's Ken up. He's 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 is enough. So yeah. I get what he's doing. So although I don't know, I don't know if that Jimmy Butler hair is on point. 
I I know that it's not, but I hadn't had time to get around to him or Jorge McAfee. Um, <laughs> so you're telling me on the podcast you're not going to be doing standing up in a tank top? It's highly, highly unlikely. Like, I give this to McAfee, man. I couldn't do no show that long standing up. Like, that's a level of energy that I simply do not possess. No, I don't have it either, man. I don't have it either. All right, but we'll talk to you later, man. I appreciate it. I, all right, man. You guys be good. Big thanks to Bomani for hanging out with us. And big thanks to Graffiti. Every time we talk about the Panthers, as we did with Darren Gann or throughout the week, it's brought to you by Graffiti. Yesterday, Halloween night, that was your break-even night. And if you want to watch some more football this upcoming weekend, and they've got great bourbon specials, it's all at Graffiti in downtown Cary. Uh, I can't express this enough when it comes to Graffiti. It's a cool it's a cool spot. It's a cool vibe. they got great TVs. But really, the reason why you go is the cocktails and the bourbon selection. They have an incredible bourbon selection and on Tuesdays and Sundays, they have some incredible deals that go along with that. So go check out Graffiti in downtown Cary. Also, thanks to Mosquito Authority and Pest Authority. It's finally cold out, Joe. You might not have to worry about mosquitoes anymore, but you might have to worry about other critters. That's where Pest Authority comes into play. Also, the moisture under your house. It's important stuff. Seriously, we talk a lot about mm -hmm. protecting your number one investment, which is your home. Figure out what's going on under your house. Mosquito Authority, Pest Authority. Check them out at bugsbite.com. Punch in your zip code. You'll see all kinds of ways to save. And as always, we appreciate Hayes Lancaster, the OG. OG. Hanging out in the studio with us is my dad, Ernie, in the house. You're all uh, you're all Miami'd out. That's right. You know, that's my school. It's all about the U. But you're not going on Saturday. Class of 74. Yeah, I'd rather go see my grandson at uh, the Kerry Band-Aids competition. Yeah, this is, so to be Ooh, clear, yeah. to be clear, uh -huh. my dad is not about to give away Miami NC State tickets at Carter-Finley Stadium because he's done with Mario Cristobal. It's not, that's not the reason why. Okay. It's not the reason why. Typhoid Mario. <laughs> the reason why. The reason why is because Carry Band Day is on Saturday. Enlo's marching band, I think, is supposed to perform at like 8.30. 8 8.30, yes. PM? PM. PM, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, was... plus, the other reason why, too, is that mom hates an 8 o'clock game. Well, I, no, we were hoping for a noon game. Yeah, that's right. Your mother does not like night games. We're in the same boat, too. We're okay. old now. 8 yeah. o'clock games are just brutal. You're not that old, okay? Dad, trust me. I'm feeling old these days. Yeah, trust well, me on that one. It gets worse. All right, so, so typically what we do is when we give away tickets, Joe, you're you're the ticket czar. You email the digital tickets to the winners, yeah. like for the OG tailgate. Of course. Yeah, because we, we announced those winners earlier in the show, so we give those away. You mail them. My dad does not operate that way. Mm -hmm. My dad has actual physical tickets. If you're watching on YouTube, you can actually see these physical tickets. They're not printed out from Ticketmaster. They're mailed from the Wolfpack. No, the University of Miami Hurricane Club, which I'm a proud member of. But they get them through state. And then yes, they send them to and you. They mail them to me from my go. from Miami. Okay, so there they're you mailed go. from Miami. Why are you shaking your head, dude? I mean <laughs> it's it's been like that for UNC and Duke. Same. And, and Wake Forest, yeah. Yeah. For some reason, visitor section tickets are printed out. They haven't joined the 21st century yet. But you love that because you also haven't joined the 21st century. Yeah. So let me do the promo. All right, do the promo. Buenas. Estos boletos <laughs> para el juego de fútbol americano entre la Universidad de Miami y los Huracanes contra el paquete de los lobos, yo los llevaré a ustedes directamente y se los daré en sus manos. Ok. Wait, it, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yo, paquete hands? de I los know, lobos. I, I might. Tremendo paquete. That's, right. See, That's not pack. See, see. Doesn't, doesn't YouTube have uh, subtitles? They do have subtitles, but they're English subtitles, so I don't know if yeah, it's going to work. That way they understood me if their AI it's not, is working pack correctly. Of, pack of wolves is not paquete de lobos. How, how would you call it? Because paquete is like slang, is it not? Mm, Tremendo no, paquete, paquete, hijo. Yeah, 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 that's right. Listen, it papo. A, it, it was a negative. I mean, I root for state uh -huh. uh, unless they're playing the hurricane. Okay. All right, because you know my two boys went to 
to state. So I'm, I go to a lot of state games. All right, so here's how it's going to work. Right. Since we have actual physical tickets and we cannot email them to you, we're going to give you the Ernie delivery service. Hernando. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, the, <laughs> er, smart, er, the <laughs> Hernando <laughs> delivery yeah, service. Yeah, Ernie's my IBM name. Okay, <laughs> fine. So the Hernando delivery service, and we're not kidding. My dad is actually going to hand deliver you tickets. There, there's a there's a catch here. Oh God! It has What's to be in Raleigh, Durham, yeah, Chapel trying. Hill area, not Miami. If you're <sighs> gonna want, you know, even though I might be tempted to drive down to my to Hialeah, the and greater have a triangle cafecito. Area. Yeah, you always find. Have, a, uh, you always actually speaking of which, speaking of cafecito, you're here Friday, right? Next Friday? No, this Friday. You're here, right? Mom's here oh, Friday. You remember? Since I retired, I don't know what day it is. My yeah, God. we're here Friday. See, yeah. you guys have that in See? common. Yeah. No, you because retired too? we're simpatico. No, Joe never knows what day it is. <laughs> but he's retired. He's cut out. He's working, but retired. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way of putting it. Uh, no, so uh, what, what? Jorge Sedano, George yeah, Sedano's see? in town for the North Carolina Campbell game. He's calling that oh. game. Oh. oh. So he hit me up and he says, hey, man, where can I get cafecito? Yeah. And I said, nowhere other than my parents. Okay. So I think George is going to come over on Friday. To, to the house. Okay, I better tell your mother. Yeah, about I was because gonna, I was you know tell we mom are that. having the house. We repiped it, and now they're putting back the holes in the wall. Yeah, I know. so there might be Travis might be there. It's fine. I don't think George is going to worry about that. Yeah, hopefully so, by so, then your mother can access the coffee. So machine. speaking of cafecito, the cafeteria. No, the cafeteria. Speaking of cafecito, that's how you're going to win these tickets. Uh, to qualify for these tickets, for my dad to literally hand deliver them to you. Subject line: Cuban coffee. To the OG goes digital at gmail.com. Again, that's Cuban Coffee subject line to the OG goes digital at gmail.com. You have to be in the triangle. You have to send us your address, your contact information, and then my dad will show up with the tickets. And then are you going to talk their ear off for about 20, 30 minutes? No, no, I'll, I'll keep it short. I'll keep it brief. But I need a phone number to call them. That's what I'm to, saying, to contact coordinate. information, yeah, to yeah, coordinate, yeah. things like okay, that. Okay, all right. Okay, so if you're comfortable giving my dad your information, it's a lot better than cookies, yeah. right? So then we can... You, got you don't know? You don't know? No, 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 no. I don't have cookies. I'm talking about cookies, like the web cookies. Can, oh, that. You, yeah. Can we, talk, right. can we talk real quick about something, though? Sure. Like... The U is is the U against one team and one team only in the ACC now. NC State. Well, yeah, and I don't. Expe- <laughs> I, to be honest with you, I believe that, and you know, NC State has a good chance of winning. I would bet on NC State. This since is the, a, since no. You, this is the like, one team who Miami shows up for. You. This not, is now. Not, bec- this has now become their Florida State. No, but congratulations. No, I don't. I don't. You but care but about state. I don't think, that's Mar- it. I don't think Mario has played them yet. No, no it, Manny no. beat him. Manny that, beat that's well, that's the scarred. saddest no, indictment of Manny, Dave Doran's yeah, entire that, tenure. No. That's the one game he needed to win. He lost to Manny freaking Diaz. Yeah, well, but hey, time. But this he, is a different I was, situation. I'm going to disagree with you with the Miami being the the, the four whole, in a row, like Super Bowl. Is it four in a row? Four but in I mean, a row. we I mean we remember the Devin Hester game. So I remember I took you to that one where he took the kickoff back first thing. But the. the and you went to the one in the Orange Bowl where they lost by a field goal in overtime. Yeah, overtime. that was one. Of, that was one of Tom O'Brien's, you know, yep. fading glory of second to last game Miami. at the Orange Bowl. Miami's five and two against State since they really? joined the ACC. I know Russell Wilson's one of those wins. Yep. So because yeah. I remember you and I were at that game, and yeah. we both watched Russell Wilson break ankles, and I'm like, man, who's this guy? Who, uh, hey, they, who's this guy? B? They, what the hell is, happened to Miami? That's they, the they, last they, time State beat him. Oh wait, they, was that that was the last time? Yep. Jeez. But, okay. But the the game I re- well. The game I remember the most was when they played East Carolina, oh, yeah. and, and, the, and the East Carolina came back in the second half. Mm-hmm. That's why I forgot the, the, the Steve wine, Logan, the, the wine drinking. Yeah, Steve Logan, coach. So, but <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> wine drinking. Well, coach. he he knows his wine. Let's put it. That. No, no but, he does. But if Sedano is calling the game, no, 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 he's calling the North Carolina oh, Campbell oh, game. I don't know. West he, Durham. Oh no, it's an ACC Network game. Yeah, it's an ACC oh, Network game. So oh, it's West. No. Oh, no, he's bad luck. Wes is bad luck. He was the one when they were playing Georgia Tech. He kept, you know, like two minutes left. These guys should that, not be running the ball. They that wasn't be taking luck. The... That was idiocy. Oh, that I was know, an, an inability to count. I know. That's and, not but, luck. but Wes Durham brought it to my attention with That's... two minutes left. I said, whoa, he's right, you know. And then number two fumbles the ball. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to. Instead of going down, you know, it's trying. Okay. So, any, well, that's, yeah, typically what West Durham has to deal with is state fans going, that's Woody's boy. Now we got to deal with well, Ernie thinks that, or I'm sorry, Hernando thinks that you're bad luck. 
I don't know how I don't know how West is going to handle this. Well, the, but he also I believe did the Clemson overtime game, so he made up. It was for an it. ACC network game, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So okay, that was the Clemson. So that one of those ABC. No, he does like whatever the ESPNU, well, but, ESPN well, two. He, he did the the Virginia game. Yes. So go oh, sorry. He did do that game. Oh, yeah. All right. So a reminder, subject line, because we meander. Cuban coffee subject line, VOG goes digital at gmail.com. My dad's going to hand deliver you some tickets to the NC State hopefully Miami Hopefully by end of business Friday. Yeah. If not, you know, because Saturday's Caleb is at Curry Band Aid. Do your parents, by the way, now that we're all here, yeah, and we're all family here, do your parents do the same thing where they have like one thing in the day that's like at night? And everything the rest of the day cannot happen. Like, it's shut down. It's like, oh, no, can't do that. Like, hey, do you want to meet up for lunch? Because my dad does this all the time. Do you want to meet up for lunch? And then my dad will be like, no, can't do that because we're going out to dinner. At 8 o'clock. Mentiroso. That's bullshit. Mentiroso. No, that's not, no, 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 no. Because, like, you and mom are going to, oh, we're going to the D-Pack. But the show's not till 8 o'clock. Doesn't matter. We have to prepare. Okay. I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to get myself into trouble here, with, especially with your mother. I think you try to pace she watches, yourself. You know, mom, yeah. doesn't, mom doesn't you, watch. Yes, yeah, she does. I don't, but she does. Oh, okay. Well, that's I only, why mom. I only contribute monthly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so does your brother. Yeah, if, if we were a college, we would have the Ernie Ovius yes. soundboard. We would have. I, yeah, we'll have to get it. I have to roadcast it. Ernando Ernando, I have to get it etched look, into the roadcaster. We do I, need I, to. I, yeah, look, Joe, do Joseph, Joseph, in May May 20, May of 1974, Stop it, I went <laughs> to work at IBM in Boca Raton, Florida. I drove up from Hialeah, took me an hour and a half, which led to me marrying your mother, but that's another story. And when I got there the next week, my manager, Jerry Carter, says, uh, Hernando, I'm sorry, but you're... And that was including Manhattan, your godfather. Yeah. Uh, your colleagues cannot pronounce your name, so we're gonna we're gonna call you Ernie. Ernie. I mean, they didn't even give me a chance to come up with my own American name. All right. So I said, look, "Wait, did you have did you have an opinion? Like, what no, no, what no, would you go no, with no, your American no, no. name?" I, I, I came from came <laughs> like from I had I had no choice. I was high, came from highly. I had very little money, so I told them, "Look, as long as the because back then every week they gave you a paper check." which you would take to the bank and deposit. There was no electronic. Yeah. So as long as my check has my real name on it so I could cash the money, it was a, I was making $1,000 a month then. I made $12,000 a year. That's what I was there. Mm. Making that's more than us. Back then, yeah. Yeah. But then that, that's where in the middle of the. I made $13,000 my first year at the end of the. The, oh, wow. In, in 97. 97. <laughs> what did I make my first year at 850 The Buzz full time? Well, Full time 850 the buzz in 2002. I was making like 22, 23,000. Maybe it's a lot. But hey, uh, just for inflation. Joseph, Joseph, I was the number one electrical engineering student coming out of the University of Miami. All right. That's why I became gave me, gave me a little extra nil money. Is that what you guys call yeah. it? A little sign <laughs> bonus. I'm just mad you never made it to White Plains. My well, whole community was, yeah. was IBM people. Well, you know, but that, that's where you go when to pitch, pitch your stuff. To headquarters. That was stuff. the home base. I, I went. I went to uh, New York a lot. Yeah, and 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 here. Raleigh and he, yeah, here we could have moved to. We could have been in Rochester. Ooh. <laughs> right? No. Actually, I like Rochester. <laughs> Never been. Oh no. no Kodak was there. I yeah. learned. I learned uh, another story. Then I know you guys are. No, Ernie. Trust me. It's a podcast. Trust me. In 19, we got time about that. I got to this country Christmas Day, nineteen sixty-one, oh, okay. into Miami, and then. <laughs> Uh, we, my dad got a little, how old were you? Eight years old, eight years old, 61. Okay. Okay. So my dad got a little apartment in Southwest, about two miles from the old orange bowl. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, we have, he has his cousins, the, his American cousins, because a mm -hmm. branch of the OES family settled in St. Louis instead of in Cuba from Spain. So he went to visit his cousin, Joe. <laughs> That's right. Joe Obvious. The original Joe the, Obvious. The only Joe Obvious. The, the, yeah, this is true. <laughs> this is true. He, the, the Joe Obvious that fought in World War II in the Pacific. Yeah. But anyway, so Joe was a foreman at the old Anheuser-Busch plant in St. Louis. And my dad went up there in February of 62, and he got him a job. So when he was driving back with his friend, he got caught in a nice storm in St. Louis and got stuck there for a week. 
And then I'll never forget when he got back to Miami, he told me, I have a job in St. Louis. But, and I'm translating here. Mm -hmm. I would rather starve to death in Miami than freeze to death in St. Louis. If my dad would have gone there in the summer. Oh, he would have loved it. He would have, you, yeah, you might have been somebody else. Yeah, maybe. It's entirely possible. All right, that's it. I got to stop talking. I'm sorry, guys. That's fine. (laughs) That's fine. Uh, Next time you come in, bring your uh, Cuban baseball player uh, baseball card collection. Okay, uh, that might keep me here for eight hours. Well, maybe we, maybe that's how we get Oak City back on. Okay. Do an entire, uh, do an entire grading of Cuban baseball players. Well, I got, I have a Stan Musial poster. I got to show him. Maybe he, they might be interested. Uh, maybe. in buying it or selling it for me. Do they? Maybe. All right. All right. All right. So the OG goes digital at gmail.com. Use that subject line, Cuban coffee, and then we'll pick somebody uh, to have my dad hand deliver some Miami. No parking pass, right? No. Okay, just double checking. No, no parking. No, just no two party. tickets. Two tickets. No parking. No. No, I, I gotta ask because no, no. people will ask me that. So I'm no, just saying, no, no parking, parking pass. pass. All right, Dad. All right. I'll see you later. Okay. My dad's a piece of work, man. An absolute piece of work. Hopefully, we'll give those tickets out uh, pretty soon. And if you're going to that NC State Miami game, you can drop by Breeze through along the way. They got the Howlers, buddy. Eight Great o'clock beer selection. Eight o'clock game. You know you gotta you gotta, you, you gotta hydrate. You know I will be at the breeze through getting the dark roast coffee, preparing, <laughs> preparing to stay awake for this football game. Yeah, I'm yeah. so mad at the ACC. I have. I've a, seen six o'clock starts like all season. The two o'clock starts hey, the best start. The two o'clock was amazing That's last an, week. Amazing start. I enjoyed it. I uh, unfortunately I will not be going to this game because. You know, as with my Carrie dad, Band-Aid. as my dad expressed, we have Carrie Band-Aid. I'll be at a hockey game uh, out at Wake, at, uh, is it a Wake competition or Wake Forest? I'm going to have to figure that out before the game Just starts. make sure you're in the right spot. I got to make sure I'm in the right uh, the right rink. So I'll be getting back to see uh, where NC State and Miami are. Uh, but if you're headed to that game, by all means, drive by the breeze through, pick up your stuff. If you're going to North Carolina Campbell, there's a breeze through just outside Chapel Hill on your way in. Grab your tailgate supplies. And if you really want to tail- take it next level, Hey, Breeze Through can surprise can they, Breeze Through can supply the snacks. They can supply the the beverages, ice, ice, which is really really important. Butcher's Market brings the meats and drop on by a Butcher's Market across the triangle. I think there's a new location that's going to be opening up soon. They got one out in Wilmington. They've got an incredible selection of sides too, easily prepared meals uh, in the fridges that you can take home. I actually have some manicotti in the freezer right now that I'm going to break out later this week. Looking forward to that one. So head on over to Butcher's Market and get all those goodies. Also, you know, the weather's changing. It's getting mm-hmm. a little cooler outside. You might think, oh, I don't really feel like cooking. Well, you don't have to. No, nope. Go get a sandwich, man. Unbelievable stuff. All right, let's get out of here with some Hey Joe questions brought to you by Oakwood Pizza Box. What's today's date? Today is it's a Wednesday. It's Wednesday. You know what that means? They're open. Open. So hang out with Anthony over at Oakwood Pizza Box. Um, putting sesames on the uh, on the dough now, right? He can do a little bit of that for you. Looking forward to Anthony that. Anthony was over at uh, Career Day yesterday, Entrepreneur Day. Nice. On Magnet Elementary in downtown. So Nice. Very nice. Spreading the word. All right. So uh, I have a Hey Joe question for you, Joe. Okay. Did you give any suggestions for a, the ACC's new scheduling model uh, that's going to take place starting next year with the additions of SMU, Cal, and Stanford? No. You know, it was too good to last. My, my schedule model, which they should have adopted 10 years ago, <laughs> lasted one. The, it lasted Jeez. one whole year. So they announced this earlier in the week, and no divisions again. All 17 league teams will play each other at least twice in seven years. I mean, what can you do, right? 68 conference games, et cetera, et cetera. Top two teams by conference win percentage will be playing at the ACC Championship. Now, one thing that NC State fans have been pointing out, this is a, a segue into actual Hey Joe questions that we've been getting, were in relation to NC State's schedule and whether or not this was the incentive that NC State was given to flip their vote or to people get mad at the word flip to uh, be on board with what the ACC was doing in adding these three schools. If you notice in the scheduling model, they play big four games all the time. Wake Forest, Duke, and North Carolina are on their schedule all the time. Is that the incentive? I said it was a feature or a bug. And let's take NC State out of this. Okay. I, I would play Stanford, Cal, and SMU every freaking year. I want to play the bad teams. They're Give bad. me the bad teams. Now I'm with you on that. And SMU might might pop, might get pop up and, and get some talent. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Look at what Louisville's doing right now. Who would you rather be? You want to be Duke right now? No. Who, who plays every good team in the ACC? Or would you no. rather be Louisville? Rather be Louisville. I want to play for the championship, right? I'm with you on that. 
I'm with you. By the way, I want you to take back every single thing you've ever said about the Coastal Division being not being easier than the Atlantic Division. Why? You know what Duke is doing right now? They're proving every single complaint, every single person. Oh, stop it. No. For real. Stop it. No. No. Yes. No. Look what they did. On the flip side. Look what Duke did. On the flip side. They had to go to the best team. In the conference, they also have a which hurt, is Florida State. They also have a hurt quarterback and almost beat. They Florida had State. to go to Florida State, and what happened the very next week? They lost the game they probably could have won yeah. under other circumstances, but they played that particular football game mm -hmm. the very week after getting beat physically beat up against the Florida State team. Now you, you're never gonna you're never gonna flip my vote on this okay. because you also have true. you also have the flip. They're stuff. proving it right now. No, you can also prove that the coastal never dies because look what happened in North Carolina where they're still getting got by their coastal brethren from back in the day. Speaking of which, speaking of Duke, uh, from one of our listeners, very cool uniform reveal for Duke against Way. K. Hey, Joe, what is the best uniform combo for each of the big four schools? I'm gonna hang up and listen. Uh, so yeah, this was the, the Halloween edition to football reveal that we're watching on YouTube right now. And, like very, it's, it's very Blair Witch Project, and I'll never stop finding players in their uniform combos going through the forest. Uh, they never gets old for me. Like I think at one point App State they had a guy coming out of like a river. Mm, then Duke copied that. Yes, Duke did copy that. They went to the Eno, and they came out of the they came out of the Eno River. Like I love all these things. It's so impractical, and yet here we are. So, what are your best combinations? I answered this question on the Twitters with state or their best combo last week: red tops, white pants. I, I'll throw in the white helmets. I prefer okay. the white helmets. Carolina, same classic: light blue on top. Give me the the pants that have the little argyle down the side. I like mm -hmm. those white pants. Duke, I think, is all white. I like the all like white the all Duke when they, especially when they pipe it with their dark blue. Yeah. I like that. That's a I good like look. That too. A little bit of Colts kind of feel to mm -hmm. it. And then Wake is when you dress like Wake, you play like Wake. Wake is the all black. I do the like classic that. Jamie Newman game. I'm gonna agree with you. We're gonna play Wake. We're gonna dress like them. Bad idea. Bad idea. <laughs> we'll get out of here on this from uh, YouTube from the Tar Heel Huddle. Matt continues to tell us. Many teams would love to be six and two, but it's a play on words. The simple fact of the matter is that UNC was six and zero, oh, and everyone was saying that this team was different. Then you dropped two straight against UVA and Georgia Tech. Yeah, stop talking to me like I'm a child in the press conference. Six and two is acceptable when you lose to Florida State in tally, Georgia in Athens. Not getting embarrassed as two teams that don't usually have great success running the football cram it down your throat and you take it laying down. Yes, I think this is ultimately where the frustration is, and this gets back to the start of our conversation today. It's it's too easy to say some things in a press conference and you also have to try to keep the, the players spirits up, but I'm sure behind the scenes, the coaching staff is going, yeah, man, there's no reason why we should have lost these two teams losing a Clemson, maybe losing a state, maybe and losing in the way that they did yeah. lose though, to have a 10 point lead in the second half of each of those football games yeah. and to lose the way that they did. I mean, that's going to wrap it up for today's show. We'll give you some premature evaluations. We'll get a check in with the Carolina hurricanes with our friend trip Tracy. We'll see what's going on at the Rialto these days. See you then. Mm -hmm.